few things in this world, especially the racing world, are free, guys. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that you will get your notification every week when these shop tours hit or any other video that we do. Hit that button. Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. It's been a couple weeks and uh, for shop tours, but we're back. And here we are, the very last Thursday in January. Thank the Lord, because I am ready for February to come and be gone so we can get this cold weather out of here. There's still some of that snow outside. It's been cold in Topeka, and it's just, it is what it is. We're actually going to have a mid-50s day today, which is going to be good, and then we're expecting some rain, so maybe it'll melt the rest of it. But we're looking pretty good. But, of course, since it's been a couple weeks, we've got a whole shop change around yet again. That's what happens when we have every two week shop tour. So let's get right into our shop tour. A couple things I'm gonna show you guys and of course we'll look at the progress on everything as well. So I'm right in the middle of um, working on this engine for Joe Baruch. So this is his second engine. You can see this one's silver. So whenever I do my build sheets for everybody, if you have two engines, I paint them different colors and that way um, and if anything gets flipped around, heads get moved, this or that, I know which engine it is. So this is a silver engine for Joe. Um, and I'm just getting into, you can see I've got the bottom end together, but I'm getting ready to um, clearance this uh, crank scraper. So people ask me on Miatas, how do we control the oil in the pan? So when you take a, a Miata engine and you go out onto the racetrack, especially with slick tires, there's a tendency for oil to get away from the pickup. So in a stock pan, I've probably showed you guys this, but we're going to kind of go over it again. In a stock pan, you've got this one little baffle plate, and your oil pickup sits right in this cavity. The problem is, under hard cornering, oil will slosh out up these corners, um, up and out, and then all of a sudden you lose, you can lose oil all the way around this plate. So something I developed, man, it's got to be 20 years ago, um, is a, a baffle plate for your oil pan. So these will fit anything from a 1.6 to all of the 1.8s with a little bit of trimming on the 1.8s. But what this is, is this sits down underneath the plate and then you put your plate on top and you put your stock bolts back in and all of a sudden we are containing our oil down in the bottom of this sump. You can buy these plates I make them for Mazda Speed Motorsports. You can buy them from Mazda Speed Motorsports. They're like $40. If you have a Miata and you have your pan off and you're gonna go out on the racetrack, even as a, a street car, track day car, whatever, get yourself one of these plates. Now in the race cars, the other thing that I do are these crank scrapers. So you can see what we have is a crank scraper that bolts into the mains here. And as the crankshaft comes around, you have to actually trim the Teflon here and what I'm trying to do is get it as close to the crankshaft as I can. You can see this one is almost touching and the Teflon will actually wear just a little bit if the crankshaft is touching. What that's doing is that's going to scrape all of the oil off of these throws. So we need to clearance the connecting rods as well. You can see they're very close to the connecting rod and the crankshaft and you just take your time. I use a teeny tiny little razor knife and I will just take my time and trim these up and this helps keep the oil from spraying up into the top side of the block keeps it down in the pan the baffle plate gives the oil time to de-aerate and get into the bottom of the sump so it's all a process so this is how we control a wet sump Miata bottom end works like a dream couple that with an accu sump no oil pressure issues whatsoever. Okay, into the shop. Nothing really on the bench right now, but what you can see here is I've got the shop turned around. So Rich Grunewald's car is now going to come up onto the main lift, um, getting ready to pull the engine out, pull his seat out. We're actually going to do a drop floor so that he's got more room in the car. Um, and he's just got a couple little little things on his list for me. Nothing super major. Uh, the car's in really good shape. This is, of course, Joe Smith's, uh, ex-Joe Smith's STL car. 
So we're gonna have this here for a couple months. You guys will get to see the whole transition on that. Now, the car that was sitting here a couple weeks ago, of course, was Ken Kennard's. Where you can see Ken's car is sitting over here on the ground, the new engine installed, and it is actually, besides the final cleaning, completely done. Motor running, broken in, dyno tuned, ready to go, all the suspension taken care of. We just had a few details underneath that we were fixing, um, like those ball joints that I showed you guys. Uh, just a few details, but man, the car's looking good, really happy. So basically, we are ready for Atlanta. And Atlanta is not until the 1st of March, so about a month ahead. I like being ahead of schedule. Always a good thing. I am so glad that I did not pull the engine out of the Camaro because it sounds like we've got more delays when it comes to the new engine. So we're probably going to start the season with this older engine. Um, see if I can get Steve to dial her down just a tick so we don't have any issues with it. Um, motor runs okay, it's just kind of timed out. So delays, delays, of course, it never ends. Uh, got a beautiful VVT core engine in, and this is actually just a street engine for a guy in Kansas City. And he reported that he's got a knocking inside. So I'm, I imagine that he's got bearings out of this thing, and it's just going to be a really nice street rebuild. So just came in. I still need to get that apart and, and get that going. In between all of this, um, I've been working on Jerry's car. What I mean is redoing the wiring. If you come around this side, you can see the switch panel is completely done. The wiring is completely done inside the car. I mounted the flagtronics up here. So this is kind of the way I like to do it. Very simple. You know, let's, let's make things simple and let's label them. We need a rain light, we need ignition switch, we need fuel, and we've got a starter button. I didn't label the starter button. If you can't figure out what this button does, you probably shouldn't be in a race car. So the panel turned out good. He had a clock on here. I'm assuming that he uh, is on the radio with his wife and she will tell him approximately what time the race is over. And so he can look at this when he's out on the track. But the dash, uh, everything lights up now. So you can see if I turn the master switch on, the dash is going to come on. I don't have all of the gauges uh, and the sensors wired up, of course, because basically the engine's not in. So I can't get it all programmed quite yet. But we're all powered up. Everything works. All the switches work. You can see the flagtronics comes on. We're looking good. So... What do I always say? I'm chipping away, chip, chip, chipping away. So basically I'm at the point now where I'm going to kind of wait on the engine to be finished, get that all in. Uh, you can see here that I did get, remember how we were talking about the bulkhead fittings and the seals at grommets? So I've got my bulkhead fitting installed here for the fuel that's going to be coming through the firewall. And I have my seals at grommet for the wiring harness that comes through. And then once the engine is installed, I will finish the wiring up here and get this all loomed out. But this is looking really good. Really, really good. Did get another car in. This is Charles Mathis's car. Uh, this is an STL car. He lives down in, the, uh, I believe, the Houston area. Yeah, Houston area. So this car has all stock wiring in it right now. It's got an old Mega Squirt plug-and-play in it currently. And what we're going to do is we're going to gut this car of wiring. So this wiring in this car is literally 35 years old. This is an 89. Still has the original wiring in it. We're going to gut this car of all the wiring. We've got a new ECU we're going to be installing and getting this all straightened out. He actually wants this in about another two and a half weeks. So I better get on it here pretty quick. So um, next week we should see some progress on this. So I need to start gutting and see what it is I do and do not need to order. I haven't even pulled the hood off yet, but um, we're getting closer, getting closer. I'll get it done. I love my deadlines. Now, the car that was sitting here, right, was the BMW Z3. Got the cylinder head back, got the cylinder head installed, got it all hooked up, got it running. Um, the car is currently sitting over here on the dyno because I'm getting ready to strap it down this afternoon while we have some nice weather and get it dyno. 
So it's all together, looking good. I wouldn't say that it runs great quite yet, but I haven't done any tuning on it yet, but it does start up and runs on six cylinders, which is a bonus. So I've got a little bit of work to do on this. I wanna try and get this dynoing done before the cold weather comes back in on us, which I think is gonna happen uh, towards the end of this, this week and also next week. So I'm gonna get to chipping away on that, actually hoping to finish that up very soon. Mazda 2 update. Okay, we were talking about uh, getting all the lines held down and how I like to hold them. So what you can see here is you can see Adele clamps holding the fuel lines as, it, as they come up. And then as it comes up into the chassis, I've got more Adele clamps um, with some zip ties holding it in certain places. The key here is just to not let any of this stuff rub. So if it won't rub, it's not going to cause you any troubles with your lines. It's not going to cause you any trouble against anything it might rub against. So we're actually looking really good on all of this. As a matter of fact, I've gotten them all completed, all replaced. If you look up under the hood, remember how I was talking about replacing all of these. So I've got all these changed over to the braided line. Even the uh, test port line has been changed. All of this stuff is brand new. Ready to go, car is run. Started it up, warmed it up, changed the oil, checked the filter. Good to go. What's next? Well, of course, the rocker is what's next. So, I just, you guys caught me by about one day. I've got the rocker piece fit and all the paint off and I've got it completely fit. So what I'm gonna start now is I'm gonna start tacking this in very, very carefully and a little bit of time and get this rocker piece welded into here. And then I'm going to figure out what I'm gonna do up here where it's kind of mangled. So, but step one, get this in next. So that's looking good. Um, I do have the door stripped completely, the new door. And uh, I'm not a paint guy, so I sent it off to my painter and he's gonna get the inside painted up and the door jam because it was that beautiful, um, copper color right which doesn't match this jam so i want it to match i want the inside to match i want the jam to match and uh we'll get this going so after that i also got noticed that the shocks are on the way so next week we are going you guys are going to be able to see the new shock package that we've come up with um we'll talk about that next week i'm really really excited about these shocks for this season we'll see what happens but they're going to work out really well so we've got about, I'm going to say somewhere between five and six weeks before Atlanta, but I'm going to be ready. We're going to be ready. There's a big entry already. I think we've got seven or eight H cars already entered. It's also part of the H production national championship. I'm going to screw this up. HP. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's going to be a focus race for the H production nationwide championship. Uh, probably the first big one for the year. I'm glad that they're doing some of these focus events at Super Tours, because uh, we need to keep our numbers up. So that's a good thing. So really looking forward to that. Chuck Mathis has already entered uh, as well for that race. And I've heard that Chris Shaftsma might be coming. Matt Brannon's already aired, entered. Eric Benazic is already entered, who was last season's nationwide champion. Uh, Braden Connolly's entered. I think Vesta Silligren's entered. I, I'm ringing this off the top of my head. I think we're going to have ourselves a really fun time in Atlanta. I'm looking forward to that. So, whew. so that's my two-week shop tour, guys. I uh, appreciate you watching and having some patience. We're really going to start getting into the racing season now, which I'm super excited about, of course. Get the Mazda going, see if we can uh, have another great season of racing. So, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate all of your comments every week. As always, stay warm. Keep working on your race cars. Race season is right upon us. I mean, like, right upon us. Keep after it. I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.